Hey guys, I'm Obro and welcome back to my channel. So today's video will be continuation of my very last video where we try to integrate Streamlit with Edge Grid uh, table and we could successfully integrate Edge Grid within our Streamlit web application. We could create uh, an interactive uh, table where there were checkboxes implemented and where users can in, uh, interact with the, each and every rows in the data frame easily and fetch the output from it. And in today's part, we will try to implement few more features in that edge grid table and we'll try to make it much more user interactive. So without any further delay, let's continue and start to write few more codes together. Yeah, so now let's try to highlight our edge grid table, maybe like particular rows we will try to highlight so how we can do that for that we will inject some javascript code uh, so let's do in this way if uh, function is uh, let's say highlight let me see how i wrote it it's highlight yeah so it's right what we do first is we just um, give the user the option to choose a particular column so you know, which row of which column the user wants to highlight so for that we will give few column options so let's do it this way so let's see how then what we can do so now we do a cell cell styling so basically we style our uh, um, our each row so you write this way cell style js go to uh, JS code probably I have already imported this module or not no so here we import another module JS code this line out here we import the module JS code also and we imp uh, we call this function and now here we will write couple of JavaScript code so I've already written it I will just copy paste or I will just write few lines so that you know we go step by step and then I will copy that part so if uh, so what we have now is if let's say we specifically uh, uh, consider this column called variant okay I think that's the most column which user may uh, want to select the alpha variant or the beta variant something like that so we do like this uh, we say function and here we put uh, like params, so it's a uh, parameters black, you know, the color of the font color basically. And the background color is important out here, so we write like this background color. I think the color C needs to be mm, yes, and we put it as let's say mm, red or anything, on, okay, orange. Let's do this way. Yeah, so this is one part. Uh, I hope this part can help us to at least be sure with this. Or I think we need to close one more bracket here. Okay, so let's select a column first. You know, it doesn't uh, come up the very end. Uh, so we didn't actually implement our our edge grid table yet. So basically, it's the previous line which we have. I'll just copy and paste from here. Uh, I'll show you what's the change we made. So we can just paste it here, and that's all. And here we must make sure that we have allow unsaved JS code true. That's all. That's something, and more or less everything is same like before. I mean, these features you can actually enable or disable. Doesn't matter much. We fitted the column now, so it has a particular size based on the value. And that's all. Uh, So if I now see my local host, there is an error. So they expected this in the background color. Let me check it. Uh, maybe we add a comma here if I'm not wrong. Let's save it. Let's see what error we get now. Uh, look, so there is no error now. And we already have a highlight for alpha because we hard coded this part. If it's alpha, we get a background as orange. That's it. It's very pretty simple. Now we can make a if else loop. 
and I will just run through that part and you know I already have written a few codes but I can just write a few more lines now if params dot value is let's consider beta yeah so beta and then you again open up something and you just return your coloration format so it's like again color uh, we always keep this as black so that's a font uh, font color actually and we play with the background uh, color again i forgot to put a comma here and you put the button. let's say let's put as a red so if this doesn't work else all of them just let's put in that way else we do like this so we again say else return and here we put for all of them we put it in this way that's right return color so again put it as black background color we put it as so let's say light pink okay not bad i like this color and i think it's fine that's all uh, a lot of spaces out here let me make it easier so that you know when you write along with me it's easier for you guys to understand so yeah that's all for this js code injection and now let's go back here let's see oh already we see the pink color for all of them maybe if we okay let me just show you this way so if i just be 1.2.58 instead of this p dot 1.2.58 just so you guys believe me that it works we put it this way and now 1.2.58 should be red in color if i'm not wrong oh look this are red in color so this is what something i was looking for oh here we have the pagination so in the pagination probably we have others so actually you can put for kappa lambda mu omicron so with everything you can just update your uh, your javascript and then you will get all the color variation maybe that you can actually define a function and based on that you can uh, rather than making a hard code you can just uh, separate and highlight them based on that but if you see the for the other dates and all it don't work okay i mean even if it works it goes to the other step so it's all pink now because it goes to the else part of it so technically you just we have uh, this highlighting only for the variant so you can actually code for those part also so that's all for the highlighting part and now we will come to maybe the delete part so we can delete a particular column or row based on its selection so let's do that part and let's finish this tutorial for time being so if you are aware we already made three options uh, display highlight and delete and now we come to the delete part and we write this function is delete so we're selecting the radio button or the radio button option which is given to the user and then we do how we did before so how we did was we say js api so this is typically a uh, javascript uh edge grid apis okay i can give you the link to this from where i found this and in that way you can implement other features also like you know adding or selecting a row a lot of other features you can check in their website and you can find it out more or less do the similar things which you did before just copy and paste use a different or we use the stream with them actually beforehand we used a different thing which was material i mean this is how it looked in material it looked like this something in display it looks something different uh, let me go back there yeah in, in, in here it looks something different okay this was probably the fresh thing 
and now we will apply another thing which is basically the streamlit the default theme of AG streamlit AG grid yeah that's all and what else uh, we don't need anything more maybe uh, it will be easier that you know once the deletion is done we also see the, the size of it so that you believe me that there is something actually got deleted because there is a pagination it's hard to understand so wait, what we can do is we can just Uh, you should also remember that we allow unsaved JS code here. So that's one of the important part. Yeah, we'll just throw some balloons once we delete something. Maybe we're just, you know, cleaning our data frame. So let's do that. So I will go to our app and here we go to the deletion part. You should be careful when you see anything getting deleted because it doesn't show up when something is getting deleted. Oh, let's see if we delete something. So we click like this. Oh, yeah, something got deleted. And total rows is now should be one zero zero four one five. Oh yeah, it's done. Let's see, we need something more. And it should be one zero zero four one four. But you need to remember that every time it's a lot of rows are getting loaded, so that's why it takes a bit of time during this period. Maybe you want me to enable a checkbox uh, like we did last time. Maybe here use uh, checkbox but it's the same part okay it doesn't matter much because whatever we select that's getting deleted so probably don't matter much but we will still try to see that so we select something like this yeah it's getting deleted so the checkbox has no purpose right now so uh, that's all so we have our display option here which is where you can select your data we get some error is it Oh, we get some error here. Maybe we should fix it. Indention. So let me hold the shift. Huh? And now probably, or oh, it's too much. So we just put. Now it should work. I hope this error will go away now. Yeah, now the error is gone. So that's the indention problem, anyways. So when we have a display, and we can actually display our results here so the user can display the results here there's a single option multiple option that's it and uh, and we see the output here it just takes it's a bit more time as i said it's a lot of data but if we select multiple we get multiple of it we can also edit our stuff and we can also change our output based on that so let me edit some of them and probably we'll see both the uh, details of those two rows look here we see the details of it output you can just change the output it's from the data frame extremely table everything is possible out here that's one way other is the highlight part where uh, we could select a particular column so right now the location column by default is selected instead of that we select the variant because we hard coded for the variant types so here we are interested with the uh, different variant types so for alpha in our code we said the background color should be orange and for this beta dot 1.258 variant uh, type we have a red background so our app looks like this so whenever there will be and for anything else the, uh, the app will show the background color is light pink i mean the row will be light pink so i'll show you how it looks like i hope we soon find something uh, alpha or beta or something which we yeah look for alpha again we found something and for beta like this so whenever there's alpha and beta we get this coloration so it's something like that and the rest we get a different color and the other part is deletion part so here if uh, we select a particular uh, row and we can delete it so now we have our 100416 we delete this particular row so we'll have 100415 so this is something which we also implemented in our table so so the different ways now so it comes to 10415 so there's different ways uh, we implement our streamlit ag grid table so it was like a very basic way to go through step by step how we can make a streamlit ag grid table how we can make it much more interactive compared to streamlit data frame which doesn't have all these features enabled within it but i hope this helps you to make an app out of it this was a very demo simple demo app but i hope you can create some uh, amazing app you guys have 
some feedbacks or you guys have some comment about this videos please don't forget to comment it back in the comment section and also if you guys want me to explore more of this uh, stream edge grid make sure to write it down in the feedback uh, or in the comment section box and that's all for today and i hope you guys uh, like this video and please subscribe to my channel and also share this video thank you